Now to a News 9 special assignment. In part one of our The Future is Next Door series, we showed you the economic impact an ethane cracker plant could have in the Ohio Valley by looking at what's happened so far in Beaver County, Pennsylvania. And while the economy is booming, there are many in the area who say it's a short-term gain for long-term pain. More now in part two of this special assignment. This is a story that's not being told and it needs to be told. The cracker plant in Beaver County continues to rise, and with it, environmental and health concerns for many, including Terry Baumgarner, who lives just a 15-minute drive from the Shell Cracker site. Baumgarner is a member of the Clean Air Council and the Beaver County Marcellus Awareness Community. Increased risk for asthma, cardiovascular disease, cancer, birth defects, and endocrine disruption, which is thyroid and reproductive disorders. So people need to know that. She's been part of a push to spread awareness to stop the industry buildup in the Ohio River Valley. Trying to support communities that are learning to resist the invasion of this petrochemical industry. Bob Schmetzer is another advocate in the county pushing to scale back on the petrochemical industry. We still have to live here. We're here all the time and we're not going anywhere. And do we deserve to be made sick? You know, can, uh, can government issue permits to pollute and, and harm us? Beaver County Chamber of Commerce President Helen Kissick. You can't have jobs and have zero impact to the environment, uh, but you need to be able to balance the two so you get a, 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 an equation that moves you forward for your uh, county, and that's what Shell happens to be doing. Kissick has a background in the petrochemical industry, so does County Commissioner Jack Manning. They think we're either killing the earth or killing, killing them. All I can tell you is, again, we're breathing the same air, drinking the same water, have the same concerns. I have a 12-year-old granddaughter lives right up the hill here. I, I, I certainly want uh, a healthy future for her as well. But air and water, two of the biggest concerns for activists like Baumgartner. She's worried about solids dissolving in the river and pollutants in the air. We've got the output, which is plastics single-use plastics, many of them, not entirely. You've got that contributing to global plastic pollution and the health impacts of that. You've got the impact on climate change. And then you've got the just pure physical health impacts. Bob Garner says enforcing regulations is another issue, local municipalities versus large corporations. Then there are financials. Shell is receiving a tax avoidance worth $1.6 billion for 600 permanent jobs. When it comes down to the permanent jobs, that, that amounts to a taxpayer subsidy of $2.6 million per job. It's much more than that. First of all, that industry has an induced or indirect job market. For every one permanent job, you have to multiply that by four or five times. And that's just connected with the site. The message from activists, don't sacrifice long-term pain for short-term gain. The reason, you know, that many people want a good job is for their family. They want it for their children. But if you're building the kind of future that folds in suffering for your children, is it worth it? If you think jobs and money are more important than the environment, try holding your breath while you're counting your money. There's some people you can't reassure. Like I said, if you're, if you're ideologically opposed, then, then there's nothing that can be said by industry or government or anybody else that's gonna convince people. In 2020, <clears throat> should we be investing in plastics? Absolutely not. One final piece of advice from Baumgartner. She says residents in the Ohio Valley should know what to expect. And we have several links to the resources she was citing in that story on our website, WTOV9.com.